congregations and also getting to eat with other fellow preachers as well. I appreciate Mr. Wayne's invitation to come and eat with y'all. I guess that's the life of a rambling preacher fan, I guess. <laughs> get, the, get the benefits of uh, getting to eat with, with brethren. I'm so thankful to be here. Thankful for the opportunity to be with the saints at the Rome. You go ahead and turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 26. That's going to be our main text this morning, Acts chapter 26. We can read all throughout history, and uh, probably Adam will appreciate this as well because he's a history major, that the carelessness on behalf of humanity has, has most likely led to catastrophic failures. We can see the, the disaster of the Titanic. We can even say that was pride as well, saying that this ship cannot sink. Now, God himself cannot sink this ship. But we know that story where, where the iceberg struck the side of the ship, filled five compartments instead of the four where it could stay afloat. And as a result, the 1912 the Titanic sank. Failure in, or I guess we could say pride in other things. We also see a, another example of the carelessness on the behalf of mankind is the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. Workers at the power plant there in Chernobyl failed to do routine inspections on the nuclear reactor. And as a result of that nuclear explosion, the place can no longer be inhabited. Maybe another hundred years down the road, people can start to inhabit the area there again. But we can see there the failure on the behalf of of the workers of that power plant that were put in charge of doing routine inspections on that nuclear reactor. But as a result of their carelessness, they caused a nuclear explosion. And the consequences of that disaster is going to be felt for another hundred years, as we mentioned. But y'all, the, the consequences of not becoming a Christian consequences of not obeying God and His will, those hold eternal consequences. We're told in Scripture that there's going to be two places where we'll spend eternity. There's heaven, and there's a place that we really don't like to talk about much, and that's hell, torment. It's important to know the urgency and the importance of or, it, or, the, uh, or how important it is to obey God and His will. I hope in today's lesson that you'll see that the urgency and, and the reasoning for becoming a child of God is so important. It's the most important thing that you can do in your life. We read there in, the, in that Chernobyl disaster that they had guidelines to follow. And as Christians also, we have guidelines as well. But read with me in Acts chapter 26. And I'll beat you there. I should have turned to it. Acts 26. We'll start here and we'll back up just a little bit. Let's see. I'll say this. Yeah, Acts 26 and verse 28. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Look at verse 27, what Paul asked Agrippa. He said, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Y'all can't imagine what Agrippa's face was there. He's like, whoa, this guy knows. Y'all, Agrippa knew the scriptures. Paul said, I know you know, Agrippa. I couldn't imagine the, the face on Agrippa's, on his, just his face there. That he knew what the scriptures said, and Paul called him on it and said, I know that you believe Agrippa, but y'all look what Agrippa said. You're all, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. How Paul got in this position here is the unbelieving Jews accused him, falsely accused him, bringing him before King Agrippa. And the conversation led up to him saying, you know the scriptures, Agrippa. I know that you believe. He said, almost thou persuadest me. Y'all, what a catastrophic failure 
on a river's plain. He knew the scriptures. He knew the guidelines, the prophets, but he failed to obey them. Yo, a catastrophic failure could be on our part if we don't obey God, if we don't obey his will for us. What a catastrophic failure on our part if we don't do that. So in this lesson this morning, I want us to understand that a better world begins when we are a child of God. A better world begins when we decide that I am going to serve God. We can even mention our, from our Bible class, I'm going to deny myself, I'm going to serve God. And I'm going to be a Christian. And I want us to understand the urgency and becoming a child of God. Point number one this morning, we need to understand that sinners are unprepared to meet God. One cannot continue to live in sin and go to heaven. We read in Paul was condemning the Romans for letting their sins continually abound and thinking that grace will wash over their sins. In Romans chapter 1, or Romans 6, verse 1 through 2, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means, Paul says. How can we continue in sin and live, or how can we, that we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So what Paul is saying there, we need to come out of that state of sin. We need, to, we need to change our lives, come out of that state, because you're dead in that state. We can't continue to live in sin. We need to change that. We need to turn and cha make changes or, or amends in our lives. So the Romans were condemned by Paul there. They think they thought they could continue to live in sin. But Paul said, by no means, we need to come out of that state of sin because we can't live in a dead state, what Paul was saying there. Another reason that we need to come out of that sinful state is because judgment is a sure thing. And no one can escape judgment. We read in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14, it says, For God shall bring every work into judgment. With every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So we see that God will judge man by his deeds and his body. You know, every single one of us will stand on that day of judgment accountable for what we've done in this body. We can't escape judgment. We're told that we, we will be held accountable for those things. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 tells us, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that which he has done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. And even in Acts chapter 17, verses 33, 30, uh, 31, it tells us of that appointed day that we must all stand for before, must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. It reads in Acts 17, verse 30 through 31, it says, In the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised them from the dead. So we see here as Christians there's going to be a day of judgment. And we need to ask ourselves, are we prepared for that day? Are we prepared? We need to understand that we need, we need to prepare to meet God. Act Hebrews 10 Verse 31 says, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Y'all, God is our judge. And we shouldn't be scared of God, but we should. There's a certain amount of fear there. We need to have that respect for God because he is the one that's going to judge us. And that's exactly the point that's mentioned there in Hebrews. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Also in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, for all have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. So every one of us in this room has, has sinned. And if we're not a Christian, we have no amends for that. If you're not a Christian here this morning, I hope you understand the urgency to come out of that sinful state. To obey God. Because we read there in Romans 3 verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's important to believe on Him. And without that, we cannot obey God. John 3.18 says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So it's important here this morning that we believe on him, because there is not a chance to achieve salvation without believing on him. 
So point number one, you should be a Christian and you should obey God because sinners are unprepared to meet God. We see there that judgment is a sure thing. We need to realize that if we are in that sinful state, we need to come out of that sinful state. If we haven't obeyed God, we need to because there's no remedy for sin other than Jesus Christ. So we need to make sure that we should be a Christian because sinners in their sinful state is unprepared to meet God. Point number two this morning, we should... Want to be a Christian because life is uncertain. We don't know when we walk out those doors what life has for us. <clears throat> Most of y'all were alive and here when 9 11 happened. I know, I think me, Abby, and Adam were probably the youngest ones in this room. Probably you too. But I remember that day when I was in kindergarten. I remember standing there looking at the TV and seeing the smoke. Yo, how many workers in the towers there realized what was going to happen to them that day? It's just another day, right? Poured the cup, uh, cup of joe and they went out the door. But y'all, they didn't know what, had, what that day had in store for them. Neither do we. We have no idea what's going to happen when we leave this building. We also know that Jesus Christ may return at any time. Matthew 24, verse 44 says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Peter goes on to say in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, it says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Notice what Peter used there, as a thief in the night. Looking over this lesson, I'm, I'm reminded of, of a story when I was younger. A, young, uh, a, a guy broke into our house and stole my mom's purse in the middle of the night. Y'all, we had no idea that man was there. Come to find out that her purse was found in the neighbor's bushes. But y'all, he broke into our house. An intruder came in our house. We had no idea that man was there. Peter tells us, that the day of the Lord is going to be in a like manner. A thief in the night. When he returns, our time will be up. That's why it's important to see the urgency and why we should be a child of God. Why we should want to obey his will and not our own. <coughs> Understand that life is short, but eternity is is forever. Job 24 verse 22 says, He draweth also the mighty with his power. He rises up, and no man is sure of life. Job telling us there that, you know, life just, it's unexpected what's to come, what's to happen. The outcomes, we don't know. You know, the workers in the tower, they had no idea what was coming. Job 34 verse 20 tells us, in a moment shall they die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight and pass away, and the mighty shall be taken, taken away with a mighty hand. 1 Samuel 20 verse 3 tells us, And David swore moreover, and said, Thy father certainly knoweth that I have found grace in thine eyes. And he saith, Let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, there is but a step, between me and death. That's how close we are to death. It's just a step. Is what we're told there. And we, we know that verse in James 4 verse 14. Life is just a vapor. That appeareth for a little time. Then vanisheth away. Brethren sometimes I go fishing. And I'm reminded of this verse. When I see that. You know, the, the vapor there coming off the lake. In the early morning hours. Y'all it's there for a little bit. But like that so our life is the same way but a vapor when compared to how long eternity is Guyton had a good illustration of just how long eternity is Guyton's a director of school with Northwest Florida School of Biblical Studies and I, this, I'll always remember this just imagine eternity as a string tied from the moon all the way to the earth and an ant was to 
pick every single grain of sand off the earth and to carry every single grain of sand off the earth on that stream to the moon and back would just be the beginning of eternity. Y'all, that, that blew my mind thinking about that. That would just be the beginning of something that's never ending. The urgency in obeying God because eternity is forever. Also understand that one could die today. We're not sure of life. Proverbs 27 verse 1 says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And also in Luke 12 verse 16 through 21 of the parable of that rich man. Hold your finger here in Acts. We'll go over to Luke chapter 12. Let's read this together here. Luke chapter 12 verses 16 through 21. It reads, starting in verse 16, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But look at verse 20. But God said unto, them, unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall these, th these things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Y'all, we got to have our priorities straight. So many people in the world today build for this world. And neglect their soul and their salvation. What a great lesson for us when we realize that we haven't had our priorities straight. Maybe we haven't. But we need to have them straight. We need to obey God first. Because we don't know what's going to happen. That rich man there didn't know he was going to be, he's going to die that night. Didn't know his soul was going to be required of him that night because he was planning. He had plans for the future. And he was not prepared for spiritual things. So we see here that we should be a Christian because sinners are not ready to meet God, number one. We should be a Christian because life is uncertain, number two. And we should be a Christian because God has given us salvation, number three. He has done what is necessary for us to have eternal life. God understood that we needed a Savior, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He understood what it took. The price that had to be paid. Jesus Christ himself. And Jesus Christ is the only cleansing agent for sin. We read in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. It says, in whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Revelation 1 verse 5 says that from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of, of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And 1 John 1 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So we see that Jesus Christ is the only cleansing agent for our sins. And God understood that we needed that Savior. Y'all, the whole Bible is about the scheme of redemption. Genesis through Revelation. It's a story of Jesus. It's a story of the remedy of sin. All the way back from the beginning in the garden with Adam and Eve. And we also know that this salvation is available right now. Not next week, not next month. The price has already been paid for our sins. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 says, For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now 
is the day of salvation. Right now, salvation is available. And if you're not a Christian here this morning, you can contact that blood of Christ. If we're not living the way we should, we need to make amends for those things. We need to change. Make sure we're living that life for Him. Acts 2, verse 37 through 38. When, uh, when the people asked Peter, what shall we do, men and brethren? He just got done preaching to them that you crucified the Son of God. And they were pricked to their hearts. They said, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of sins. Have we done those things? So it's important to know that we should be a Christian, that we should be living for God, because sinners are unprepared to meet God. Number two, life is uncertain. Number three, if you haven't obeyed the gospel, y'all, this salvation is available right now. And it's free. And that price for you was paid, even when we didn't deserve it. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And this salvation is available for all mankind. Last point this morning. We should be a Christian because rejecting or neglecting his will will lead to eternal punishment. We already made the point that we will morally die. Hebrews 9 verse 27 says, And, it is as, and as it is appointed man unto man wants to die, but after this the judgment. And those who neglect Christ will be a castaway. I often think of that movie with Tom Hanks, Castaway, y'all. I know I'm kind of laughing too. I kind of picture the Wilson, you know how he's floating away like that? Anyway, he's a ca he was a castaway there, separated from society. And y'all, the Christian, when we don't obey God, we're going to be an eternal castaway, separated from God for eternity. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7 through 9 tells us that we will be that eternal castaway. It reads, And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9, Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord? And from the glory of his power. Brethren, that's something I don't want to experience. There's no turning back for the one that has died. We read of that rich man and Lazarus. When the rich man woke up and realized that he was in torment. He wanted Lazarus just to come and just dip a little bit of water on his tongue. But Abraham said it couldn't be done. The rich man realized that it was too late for him. But he had concern for his brothers still on this earth. Please let me go back just to tell my brothers about this place that they may not come here. He says they have Moses and the prophets, Abraham said. Let them hear them. So what that means is it's too late for you, rich man. You neglected those spiritual things. But your brothers that are still alive, they still have a chance to hear the prophets and obey God. A few months ago, I had a friend that I had the privilege of baptizing. His name was Thomas. One of my best friends since childhood. But y'all, I neglected to study the, the gospel with him. And his brother passed away. And when I read him Mark 16, 16. He about jumped up and stuck to the ceiling because he realized that he hadn't been baptized. But the first thing y'all he thought about was his brother. He said, oh, but Jonathan wasn't baptized. And y'all, that was an emotional moment for me because I neglected to tell him the gospel while he was still alive. But I said, you know, Jonathan's thinking about you right now because the rich man thought about his. His brother, he obeyed the gospel that night. Y'all, we don't need to neglect spiritual things. It's important to obey his will because we don't know when we'll leave this earth. Are you prepared? Are you obeying his will? Because there's no turning back once we leave this earth. In conclusion this morning, don't be like King Agrippa. Almost, Paul. 
Y'all, we often sing that song, almost but lost. Almost persuaded. Don't say almost. Decide now. If you're not a Christian, I'm going to obey the gospel. Decide now, if I am a Christian, I'm an erring child of God, I'm going to come back and serve Him. Don't be that almost person, because almost will not cut it. The Lord's invitation is now open. You've heard the word of God today, Romans 10, 17. So faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You need to believe what it says. You need to repent of your sins, Luke 13, 3, and confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Be baptized for the remission of sins, Mark 16, verse 16. And ultimately, you need to remain faithful, Revelation 2, 10. Be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give thee a crown of life. Have you done those things? If not, Brother Wayne and I, myself, or Adam can help you. As together we stand and sing the invitation song.